Good afternoon, folks. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim Wheaton with Low Kick MMA, and today we have a special guest joining us, and I am so excited. He is the CEO of BKFC Asia, Nick Chapman. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> but it blows my mind. How good do, did Buaka look in his last fight? Like, how was this guy still <laughs> doing that at his age? You know what I mean? He looked good. Dude, I think he's in the best shape of his life. I'm not even joking. The guy's insane. <laughs> and you're not the only one to say that. Like Superbon was saying the same thing. Like training with him, he's still with yeah. it. He's still yeah. got it. It's absolutely insane. How is he still able to do it? He's he's in his he's nearly 40 now. Like, how is this guy doing this? He just lives and breathes fighting. He's also uh he's going through the process of training to be a special forces agent in the army in the mili Thai military. Uh, and that's quite intensive training. He's he gets a lot of time on campus to do uh, Muay Thai training as well. He's just being beasted every day. <laughs> he is he is living the life as like the coolest person you could ever imagine. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so he is one of the greatest of all times in the kickboxing ring. And upcoming next year, he will be taking on one of the greatest in Muay Thai. And this will be a BKFC hosted fight. He's going to be fighting Sanshai. Now, you have some information for us. Tell us a little bit more about this fight because I'm excited for it. Okay, well, look, I mean, it was a dream for me. When 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 I come in, we started running the BKFC. Uh, I had an inkling. I mean, I always wanted Sanchai and Borkel on the cards. I, I was like, whatever I've got to do, I'm going to get these guys. And um, we got we got a really good sponsorship with Singha Corporation, a, a sponsor of Borkel, and they helped us facilitate Borkel. As soon as I got Borkel signed, Sanchai I knew was going to be relatively easy compared to him. But there are like just a myriad of problems around these two people. I mean, they're great guys, don't get me wrong, but there's so many coaches and managers and sponsors that all want a piece of the pie and they all want to try and, you know, protect them in every way they can. And it was a nightmare. It was like playing a grandmaster at chess trying to get these <laughs> this deal signed. And we got it signed, as you see, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, mind-blowing. I'm, I'm just blown away. It's two absolute legends coming together here. It's going to be such an exciting match as well. And that's going to be in March of next year. Now, let me ask yep. you, Sanchai Buakau, uh, Buakau ha has a more experience, I think, it, with bare knuckle. Sanchai, I think maybe might be, I mean, he, he might be in better shape because he was more actively fighting. He was taking fights every year. He's taking two or three fights for the last 10 years. Who do you have in this one? Do that. I mean, look, I'm going to give you an oversight now. I'm going to get, because look, as you can imagine, like, I've looked into this quite deeply. I now, can imagine. Sanchai's had a, had more fights, okay? Yeah. Um, but Sanchai's slightly lighter. He fights at a lighter weight category. Um, and he's been more active than Borkow. Borkow hasn't really been active in, in high-level professional fighting for some time. Yeah. Um, but you've got Sanchai. Is, is, his fight IQ is the best I've seen. I think he's, incredible. he's a wizard in that ring, as you know. Um, his speed, his agility, his angles, and his boxing is better than Borkow's. Mm -hmm. But Borkow's a beast. Borkow's power, strength, toughness is next level plus let's not take away the fact that Borkow is a world-class kickboxer yeah so and here's what we've done because Borkow is slightly bigger so he's got that slight advantage so Sanchai was a bit concerned about the size so I said okay well we're going to make Borkow cut to 68.5 you've only got to come up half a kilo because he walks around at about 68 so he's got okay so Borkow's like oh please can we do it 70 it's no way like this has to be as fair as it can possibly be so we're making him cut and we're not giving him the, the 48 hours to replenish either so bringing him right down and he's going to go for a brutal weight cut so he's going to come in at 68.5 the same as Sanchai but he's not going to get all that time to really replenish here's the other thing because he is bigger and stronger than Sanchai generally we're reducing the clinch to only two seconds and then split. So Borkow can't lean on him and wear him down, which then gives Sanchai his tools back in the center of the ring where he can use his movement and his striking. So they're the things we've done. There's obviously zero gloves, zero wraps, completely bare knuckle. Mm -hmm. The fee structure is all about fast paced. If you slow down, you get warned for action more than two times, you lose 10% of your purse. And at this level, that's a lot of money. Okay, <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> and there's obviously a, a win bonus now. Just before I let you carry on, because I've got so much about this I can talk about. But, I'm ready. Yeah, um, lay it on. <laughs> well, we put it to them, okay? And it's really funny. I'm about to release a video about how this thing come about. But we put it to them. And once it was agreed, I said, look, guys, let's be real. You two are kind of good friends. So if it's going to be an exhibition or a hard spa, tell me, because we'll promote it as that. I'm not going to lie to my fans of followers at all. That's right. But they both went, no way. If I'm, if I'm getting in that ring, I'm fighting. They're both ready to go. They wanted a real fight. 
<laughs> no, and, and that's a major surprise because from talking to people in the community, that everyone's kind of expecting this to be like an exhibition or like two very friendly legends just kind of throwing down here and there. You're saying, no, these guys want to knock each other out. That's correct. Dude, I swear to God, right? And I said to them, listen, we can put on an amazing exhibition. We can promote it as an exhibition and, yeah. and we can use this fight to promote B BKFC, Ben Uncle Muay Thai. We can launch our new platform from there. They went, no way. If I'm fighting him, I'm fighting him to win. And Sanchai said the same. No way. This is my legacy. I'm going to win. Oh, fucking hell. Real oh, fight. I swear. Dude. And dude, I would be honest if I, I would be 100% honest with the people that, that subscribe to our platform. I would say, guys, it's an exhibition or it's a hard spot. It's not. They're even talking about seeing each other in hospital afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> They're ready to throw down. But you know what? Mbwaka yeah. wouldn't take a fight where he has to cut weight because, you know, he struggled to cut weight. He's massive as well. If he wasn't taking mm. it seriously, he would have said, no, I'm not doing a weight cut. We'll do an exhibition at whatever weight class. Who cares, right? He's clearly taking this seriously. Yeah, very seriously. You wait till like, we 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 put them in front of the camera. So we got them both in a in a in a location, undisclosed location in Bangkok just last week. And we done a we done a, a an interview with Borkow on his own, an interview with Sancho on his own, and we've done an interview with them, to, with them together. Ooh. And it's hilarious. I mean, they're <laughs> they're not messing around. They're like, we're not friends until after the fight. Done. <laughs> <laughs> These two are legends. I I'm excited for it. This is this is a high, this is probably maybe the in terms of experience, this is the biggest fight that i think bkfc worldwide has ever promoted it has to be right yep i agree i mean looking at the the the, the feedback we're getting already yeah absolutely i mean it, it, look this is this is a fight of a, of a decade like for generations this will be the one that people remember i mean all right you've got your big boxing bouts and you've got your, your massive mma fights but outside of that this is going to be the one no no you said something you don't expect me to skip over it you said bare knuckle muay thai Ah, you picked up on that one. Tell, tell me, can you tell me some more? Do we got a <laughs> yeah. date in mind? What's the plans here? I think that sounds amazing. Is there, what can you reveal about this? Okay, so I can reveal some. So it it is obviously something we're discussing with the big boss David Feldman. Um, because look, bare knuckle fighting championships, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not bare knuckle boxing, it's not bare knuckle kickboxing, it's not bare knuckle more, it's fighting, which means we're opening up to a much wider audience. Uh, Bare Knuckle Muay Thai, look, we're in Thailand predominantly, that's where the company is based. Um, we've got the best Muay Thai fighters in the world here. So uh, it stands to reason, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna launch a new platform, Bare Knuckle Muay Thai, a BKFC Bare Knuckle Muay Thai. Ooh, that's exciting, I got mm. goosebumps. Think that sounds awesome, I'm super into that. Yeah. That sounds super good. At 2023, yeah. 2024, I, when, do you, when do you think we can uh, see a little bit more or hear a little bit more about this one? Okay, so uh, we we got some off the chart meetings this week. I, I think it's probably going to take us twelve months to really raise the funds we need and get the back end and support we need. We've got to go through um, the sports authorities here in Thailand as well and try and get their permission and get them on board as well. We've got a lot of work to do, but yeah. we're very very confident. I mean, we've already spoke to everybody we need to speak to, and it, it's all pretty much um, you know a verbal done deal. Uh, we've just got to yeah put in the put in the legwork now a little bit. But I would say. You're probably going to see two major events next year in Bare Knuckle Muay Thai. Yep. And I've already spoke to uh, some, some crazy matchups. Like you think the Borkhouse Sanchai is big, which it is, but there, there, there's even more crazy shit coming, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll wait and see. Hey, hey, as soon as we get a scoop, you send it over to us. But uh, you're speaking of the sports oh, yes. authority. You're, you're kind of a new sport on the ground. You've done a few shows in Thailand now. How has it been working with the sports authority? Were they very accepting of this or were they very hesitant or like compared to Westerners, were they easier to work with or harder to work with? Um, I mean, look, there's pros and cons to everything. I've been in the UK 40 years running businesses and I've been here running this and give me the choice. I'll be in Thailand every day of the week. Um, the, the thing with it is here, yes, there's there's resistance, but there's resistance around the whole world. OK, it isn't just here. However, we have got a very solid proposal, a very solid case where we've checked and gone through health and safety for our fighters. We've gone above and beyond all the, all the requirements that you'd usually see at a, in a Muay Thai event or a boxing event. Mm -hmm. We've even carried out a considerable amount of medical research by highest level medical scientists in the US, which has been peer reviewed and published, which actually shows that we are safer for the brain than traditional boxing and, and MMA because the brain is supposed to get switched off when you get a hit. You get hit with one of these, you're going to sleep. You get hit with a big glove on, you keep taking repetitive brain trauma. Brains don't heal. 
Okay, so that's helping us get sanctioned all over the world right now. But when you look at our, our presentation, it is of the highest level. David Feldman in the US has done all the groundwork to really push this sport as a legitimate sport. And, and that's helping us a lot. Oh, this is hey, that's great news. And, and one thing with bare knuckle, stop me when I'm wrong here, is, is that it's also much harder on the hands. So people don't target the, the head as much. Am I wrong in, in that assumption? Okay, interesting. It's an interesting point you make. Um, so the, the research we've got actually shows that we don't get as many hand breaks as people think. People think, oh, I'm going to break my hand, break my hand. But here's the thing. First of all, you're not wearing gloves, so you're conscious about your hand breaking. So you don't hit as hard. Secondly, you don't need to hit as hard because you get hit with a bare fist. Your opponent's going to sleep. So what we find is the good fighters that, that pick their shots and, 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 and strike properly, much less likely to break their hands. Yeah, we do get hand breaks, but you get hand breaks in boxing. What we get a lot of is cuts and knockouts. But hey, what do you want to see? That's the thing. At the end of the day, it, <laughs> this is this is blood sport. This is combat sport. Yeah. It's like, I, I yeah. think, like working in this industry for so long now, I'm like, why are people pretending? this? We want violence. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> brilliant dude love what you just said because people say to me oh what do you think about the blood and the, and the, the... i'm like More. okay look, i'm gonna be completely real i'm a, I'm a fighter okay i'm a, I'm a combat sports fan what yeah. do you want to see don't tell me you don't want to see blood and knockouts if you don't want to see blood and knockouts you're not a combat sports fan so yes. what i can absolutely guarantee you is you're going to see blood and knockouts at my events but also know this that our fighters are much less likely to suffer brain trauma because we don't get the same concussion rates. So we are in actual fact safer. And that that's awesome. That's super good to hear. Uh, it, but yeah, we'll move on from that one. Now, you guys are expanding. December, there's yeah. a show in Cambodia, correct? Hell yeah. Yeah, Cambodia is a great region. Um, I mean, it's on the doorstep from Thailand, so it was a natural progression for us. We've got some very good contacts there. But what I want to do, like the yeah. whole world talks about, you know, the, the American fighters, European fighters, but... They forget that these guys have been fighting for generations and generations here. These guys have been fighting bare knuckle since way before America was even a country. I mean, this is what's so funny. But because they don't have the funding and the and the, the media attention in these regions, they get overlooked, a little bit sort of pushed aside. So my, my I have a personal mission. I'm going to take you guys into Cambodia, into Myanmar, into the Philippines, mm. and I'm going to show you guys some real tough people. Now... I mean, these guys aren't just tough physically from fighting. Their whole lives make them tough from the day they're born. So I'm going to show you some crazy, crazy fights. Dude, and it's so funny. talking When I'm prepping interviews for American fighters, it's like, oh, yeah, so it was tough. You were in car sales and now you're a fighter. For fighters like in the <laughs> Philippines, for fighters in the yeah. Philippines, it's like, so what was it like being abandoned as a child? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's such a night and day difference in terms of, like, how hard your life is, right? Yes. I mean, these kids literally, they're... they're they're pushed into fighting from the ages of five and six to help feed their families. You know, some of them have won national top tournaments and bought their families homes with the money that they've won. I mean, this is not, this is a whole new level of toughness that the Western world very rarely can relate to. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you as well. So, so Muay Thai is, is struggling a little bit in Thailand, just changing trends over the last 20 years. It seems like it's a little bit of a good time for a new combat sport to really kind of step in here and put its stamp on things. Are you guys kind of looking at that as well? No, I mean, honestly, I've been here now six years and I think Muay Thai is, is probably developing stronger than it has been. There was, uh, mm -hmm. there's a bit of stigma around it because there was a lot of gambling going on at the stadiums and stuff, but that's been that's been pushed out now. That's, I mean, we've got a lot of companies coming in. Um, GSV, for example, they're, they're a very modern, forward-thinking company. They just took over Red Dam Man Stadium. Mm -hmm. And you've got Fairtex Fight Series now that's took over Lumpini. Yeah. And they're modern, forward-thinking companies that are really pushing the Muay Thai now. Uh, you've got one championship investing a lot of money here into the traditional Muay Thai as well. And of course, look, the, the Sports Authority of Thailand and the Muay Thai Federations here I give them their due. They they love the sport. They protect the sport, and they do whatever they can to keep it going. And honestly, I think I think Muay Thai is in a very strong position. In fact, what we're doing is probably a bit too modernised for 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 the traditional um, Muay Thai specialist. So, what do you, what, actually, what do you mean? <laughs> well, okay. Look, we're in a round ring for a start. Okay, we did five two minute rounds, which isn't so much an issue, but we're not wearing any gloves. But it's quite funny when we have a conversation with the authorities, they're like, Oh, you're not wearing gloves, but no, but you've got Moy Cartuette where you wear roped hands and punch each other in the face. I mean, it isn't a great deal different, but yeah, they're, they're now starting to look forward and go and say, Okay, let's have a look at what you've got. And I think they're, they're starting to embrace that, what we're trying to achieve because 
Look, as much as Muay Thai is a wonderful sport here, it doesn't have anywhere near the exposure that we can give it instantly. So, um, yeah, I think it's time to celebrate the, you know, the tradition of Muay Thai, but also mm. the future of Muay Thai. Oh, this is fantastic. No, it's great because it's, it's an awesome sport and we should celebrate it more. However, I do want to, yeah. on behalf of the fans, on behalf of the fans, when is Ty Emery fighting next? <laughs> <laughs> She's on December 10. Yes! Dude, Ty Emery's <laughs> back on December 10. No, Ty, Ty is the coolest person. Like I've, I've spoken to her. We did a long interview. She is, she is actually the coolest person. She's traveled around the world doing cool stuff. Now she's had maybe the most viral moment in BKFC history. Tell us, like, t- uh, December 10th, Ty Emery, what's your thoughts on her? What's the future hold? Listen, Ty Emery is an absolute legend. And, and look, I've got into a lot of trouble about what she's done. I've got grief from Davis Feldman. <laughs> I've got grief from the Thai tourist authorities. I've got grief from the sports authorities. I'm like, what did you want me to do? Like, I didn't know it was coming. And it was only one. I mean, she one come out. <laughs> could, have, just... could, have been, could have been a lot worse. Could have been two. But okay, yeah, the way fight. I see it. Yeah, go on. I can't, I'm not going to lie to anyone because I had some pressure to, to release a statement and say, oh, we can't condone that. And, and okay, in terms of the, the organization, of course I can't condone it. And if she does it again, she will be fined and I'll pay it. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, but my, my view is this. Like she 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 just expressed herself in the way she felt at the time. And I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The whole world needs more Thai Emery's. That's all I'm gonna say on it. No, and I co-sign with that. I absolutely agree with that. And <laughs> like whatever. It was an awesome knockout, too. I think people are glossed yeah. over that. It was super good. The hook and the oh, uppercut, flawless one. <laughs> flawless work. Yeah. I was sitting ringside with my business partner, who's an amazing guy, by the way, Kung Golf. Yeah. Um, he doesn't get enough credit because he's always in the behind the scenes and I'm the guy at the front. So I'm, <laughs> I'm always the one who gets all the credit. But that that man deserves as much credit as I've got. So respect to my business partner and my brother, Kung Golf. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were sitting ringside and she just jumped on the ropes. We are like, oh, that was a great knockout. And then, bop! And we went, <laughs> oh! And we looked and everyone was cheering. It was like, well, I just got away with that. <laughs> no, it was an amazing moment. I was checking the uh, the analytics on an interview I did with her, and it was just like Ty Emery topless, Ty Emery celebration. <laughs> I was like, I think something happened overnight. <laughs> I wonder what She's happened a here. Superstar, mate. She is a superstar, and Fair she deserves it. She deserves that superstar Absolutely. as well. No, she's yeah. awesome. All I can say to you is that she's a she's a what she's a wild card. I can't control her, so I have no idea how she's going to celebrate a win if she gets it on the next event. However, what I will tell you is the woman she's fighting on the next event is a bare knuckle veteran. She's well, not a veteran, but she's got experience in bare knuckle. And she is the only woman to ever knock out a man in a legitimate bare knuckle fight. She oh. fought a guy and knocked him out. And that's who's fighting Tyree next. That's a, that's going to be a hell of a banger. That's going to be a fight and yeah. a half right there. Am I right? She's not coming to lose this. Po- Her name's Poe Denman. We haven't announced yeah. all of this yet. So this is a this is an exclusive for you, my man. But that is going to be one badass fight. So Ty, as you know, she can fight. But this Poe Denman, I swear down, you should, you should see her fight this guy. She fought a guy and she knocked him out in a fight. It was legitimate. This is going to be a, a fight and a half. This is going to be a wild one here. And we'll report on it. So there's the scoop right there. That's absolutely awesome. Now, you've been a, you've been at everything, man. You've done refereeing. You've done combat sports. You're a CEO. You're a, uh, an author now. But what inspired you? Like, was there fighters that you looked up to when you were getting into combat sports that convinced you of like, oh, I need to do this? Of course, man. Yeah. I, I, look, I was born angry and aggressive. I was born with an ability to fight. It was one thing in my life I've been good at. And I happened to try too hard. Everything else in life has been a real struggle, but fighting, I could do it in my sleep. Mm. And I don't know, I, I loved it since I was a kid. Bruce Lee, um, uh, Rocky Balboa, these guys were like my absolute idols as a kid. I used to punch through walls and doors and bust my hands up because of these two and I'd beat the shit out of my two brothers, um, <laughs> <laughs> as we do. But then I, I went into martial arts at a very young age. From the age of five, I was doing judo and taekwondo. Um, mm. And then I just went off the rails a bit as a kid and was a thug. For a long time and then and then MMA come along and completely saved my life and of course you've got your classics uh, T- David Tank Abbott Hoist Gracie Ken Shamrock these guys just inspired me I, I just absolutely admired them but I've, I've been a very busy very active guy my whole life I don't sleep I just work I love work um, sleep's overrated I don't need it and I have done almost everything you could think of in the fight game over the last 25 years Oh, yeah, your rap sheet is absolutely insane. And if people want to hear more about it, there's a book coming out. Tell us a little bit more about this one. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm speaking to um, a, a 
that best-selling author at the moment who's going to ghostwrite my my autobiography but he's we've gone through it it's going to take about 12 months it's actually going to be three books because when i tell you i live a very busy life you will not believe it even he went like dude this isn't this isn't a book this is three books like we're gonna have to do three books so i said fine let's do three so yeah i mean look look out for some real crazy stuff all right, we'll keep an eye on it upcoming later on. But okay, so BKFC and the BKFC Asia now because we're expanding elsewhere. Uh, five years from now, ten years from now, what's the plan? Where do you see this organization? How do you see it looking? Well, look, we're growing exponentially. Exponentially, um, we know we got some big deals going on. We're, we're branching out. So now, Cambodia is already on board. We've got a TV deal there. The Philippines is on board. We've got a TV deal there. Thailand is already way, way in advanced stages. India next. So we're in discussions with a, with a large Indian company, the very big backers there. The Middle East, um, Vietnam as well, they've contacted us. Myanmar, because Myanmar is where left waist from. That's the, the yes. traditional bare knuckle striking art with headbutts and body slams. My favorite. It's sport. awesome. Yeah. And that hasn't had enough exposure. I think it deserves a lot more. So look, five to 10 years from now, I mean, widespread right across the continent of Asia. So David Feldman has literally put me in charge of this, this side of the planet and I will do everything in my power to make it a huge success. Dude, this is absolutely awesome. What's the best place if I want to keep up on BKFC Asia news? Oh, good. In yeah. Okay. So we are still developing our social media. We are still developing the website because there's so many different languages in this region. It's a real struggle to try and keep on top of it. We have BKFC Asia YouTube channel. That would be a good place to go. And BKFC Asia Facebook page. That'll be the best place to go as well. Awesome stuff. And even though it is BKFC Asia, this still fits under the subscription service of, of bareknuckle.tv, correct? So it's a, I think it's like a couple bucks a month and you get all the yeah. past events and future live events. Stop me when I'm wrong here. No, you're absolutely right. This is crazy because look, for $4.99 a month, you've got all this content. I mean, we're talking about Borkow, Sanchai, and Sanchai fighting in Cambodia. And if I told you who he's fighting, you would go crazy. I won't. <laughs> I can't tell you yet, bro. I can't tell you, but I will tell you soon. It's crazy. I mean, the guy is an old veteran from back in Pride Days. Wait, 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 wait. an old veteran from Pride Days, and he's still fighting. We don't that? start guess. Well, not start. He's, he, anyway, don't guess because if you call me out, I'm, I'm not a liar. I would have to tell you the truth. So don't ask me any questions. And he would be in the same weight class. I'm if, not listening. If, it's not. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Chapman. Uh, Something to think about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm excited for it. Mr. Chapman. Last word goes to you. Talk us on out of here. Where can the people find more of you? What's going on next? All that good, good stuff goes to you, sir. Well, guys, listen, I mean, I, I've always been the same from, from when I first started fighting myself. I, I appreciate each and every one of you guys that watch what we do. We would not be where we are without you. So the only people I'm going to thank here and now are all the people that tune into our content. Thank you all so much. And by all means, give me feedback. If I'm doing something good, okay, great, tell me. But if I'm not doing something or something you want to see me do better, tell me. I'm all about improvement. I want to create something real special on this side of the planet. And I uh, I need feedback and I need support to do it. So uh, as we say in Thailand, Kapun Mat Kab. Thanks so much for your time, sir. My pleasure, buddy. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.